You're about to watch the first episode in a series exclusive to Patreon that will accompany every long-form video uploaded on this channel. Thank you to my current patrons for signing off on releasing it as a public preview. Because this video is a promotion for my own project, it won't be running ads. Enjoy! Alright, hello, welcome to the first ever director's commentary for a Mockrock video. Thank you so much for pledging to my Patreon campaign. So already you're starting to see a technique that I'm going to lean on a lot more throughout this video than I have in the past, and likely going to continue moving forward, and that's luma matting. So when you see that nice blossom effect, what you're actually seeing is one video's uh, brightness values, so it's white to black values, being used to control the transparency of another video file. So in this case, that nice blossom effect comes from ink and water on a white background. And then you apply a luma mat to that and use it to control a completely different video, and you get that really nice sort of bloom in. And then you add some rough and edges effect so that it doesn't completely turn into a rectangle, so it keeps a bit of that organic feel to it. And I think it turned out really well. I'm really happy with that effect. Let me know what you think. If you thought I leaned on it a little bit too much, could have gone with it further, but initially, I was happy with how it turned out. Oh, this transition as well. Everyone talks about this transition in the comments, so I wasn't originally planning on doing that. I just had a clip of Ganondorf that I thought would go well with what I was talking about, and then it kind of dawned on me... Oh. Well, this will work, and now that I realize that it'll work, I have to do it. And I say have to do it because I knew that would be a lot harder than it seems. It took about 45 minutes because Ganondorf needed to be time-stretched, he needed to be mirrored, which causes issues with how the explosion fills the screen on the zoom-in. So I'm doing all sorts of custom zoom-ins throughout that. There's a lot more that goes into these edits than you'd initially think if you don't do video editing yourself. But again, the end result, clearly worth it because everyone talked about how much they liked it. Which is always nice to hear. Oh, right, speaking of a lot of work, so <laughs> this chess sequence was an experience. All of those pieces, those 8-bit chess pieces, were made by me and will be available to download. And also, there's so many of them, and they each need to be rendered out separately, so every time you make a tiny little tweak to the animation, it's several minutes before you can see what the actual thing will look like at full speed. And there's a lot of little tweaks to the animations involved in the creation of that. Yeah, just a little sequence of general gameplay here. I usually try to rely on tournament footage in cases like this rather than using my own gameplay. Like, you obviously can just capture some online footage, which is actually much quicker to demonstrate, but I think it's way more valuable to show it in, like, a real competitive setting. Because sometimes I will literally be looking on uh, YouTube for an hour or more for a specific little tournament clip that I absolutely need to get to illustrate something. But I still think it does a better job demonstrating the technique than just, you know, going and playing against someone weak online and getting it myself. I had a bunch of people saying this was the first time they discovered Duelist. Oh, and there's that uh, Luma technique again, so this time it's just two ink blots. And that's something you can do, you can sort of mix and match, you can have multiple ink blots, you can apply effects to the ink blot itself. <laughs> Again, that setup, that uh, custom item combo there, probably took a good hour and a half to get working properly. <laughs> a lot of values being tweaked. Yeah, this one I'm not incredibly happy with how it turned out, to be honest. Obviously, the joke is Ganondorf realizes he didn't kill Link when he should have and slowly just walks off to his death, but... I just couldn't really think of what else to fill the screen with in this scenario. I'm still kind of confused about how I could have done it better, but it seems like a little bit too long held on one thing. Generally, I like these videos to have a very quick, snappy pace to them. Yeah, even here, I originally didn't have the cut to the upside-down gray, and the end result is that it's just it's too long held on one concept. I like my videos to have a lot of movement. Oh, I like this effect a lot here. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ink plot effects that I came up with. I'm going to be saving that for later use for sure. Competitive Smash YouTubers are in an interesting spot because our audiences range wildly from top players to Get it? people who play nothing but Kirby. Top players. So depending where exactly you fall on this No one seemed to catch that. I'm disappointed. People caught my Luigi does absolutely nothing joke later in the video, but didn't get any Tyson comments. No old school Beyblade fans here. All right. Uh, this was just an excuse to play Breath of the Wild again, more than anything else. Because I only just recently finished the DLC, as you can see by my awesome bike here. But the problem is, the way Breath of the Wild is set up, as soon as you get your bike, you're kind of done with the game. 
which is a real shame because it may be my single favorite game of all time. So I'm very happy to just have an excuse to sort of go in and mess around for a few minutes with its combat again. Fighting games, including platform fighters, however, don't blink and you'll see melee and you'll see Rivals of Aether. I'm not actively playing Rivals of Aether all that much anymore. Honestly, I don't even get to play that much competitive Smash anymore, but I still think it's a brilliant accomplishment. Happy to support it in little ways whenever I can. Additionally, the game only updates every frame. There's no damage done or bodies moving between these two segments, which means the frames are extremely useful for- Good old Dark Pit. I swear to God, Dark Pit does decently well against Snake. I really don't think the matchup is that bad. Again, the Luma Mat. Oh, this effect here. I'm really happy with this. So these 8-bit explosions that you're hearing, well, we'll hear in the version that I'm not talking over. I actually made about a dozen of them or so, and again, those will be available to download. Quite a bit of work went into deciding exactly how I was going to get this particular effect to happen. I tried a lot of different things. I had Samus roll across the screen, but the way the ultimate stales rolls makes it difficult to represent the true frame data. And since what I'm talking about is frame data, I wanted to represent it, you know, more authentically. So what you're actually seeing there is just one animation looped over and over. I'm not pressing the roll uh, input multiple times. This meter again, made by me. I'll make it available. I don't really know what you could do with it, but people always surprise me with their creativity. I'll put all the assets up individually, and hopefully someone manages to use it for something cool. If you're interested in a more comprehensive look at how reaction time affects gameplay, I'd highly recommend checking out the Beefy Smash Dudes or Core Egg. Uh, so if you're watching this, you're probably familiar with Beefy Smash Dudes, obviously being one of the larger analytical channels in the Smash scene. If you're not already watching Core Egg Gaming, do yourself a favor and go watch Core Egg Gaming. He, he's more FGC, who has some Smash stuff thrown in, but his videos are so incredibly well done. If you watch his channel, you clearly see the influence he's had on me. And that entire little sequence that you just saw with the numbers, a lot of work to animate, but I think it's one of the snappier sections overall. I'm really happy with it. Whole lot of number counting to make sure that lined up. I was really paranoid about getting that wrong. It does work, but as I'm saying, it's an extremely narrow window. Not exactly. Even with so all of these training mode sections you're seeing here were done entirely by me. I'm always controlling two characters at once, and sometimes it gets uh, really obnoxious to try and work. So some of these, you know, five-second clips would take 15, 20, 25 minutes sometimes to get going, just because controlling all the spacing with a joystick and buttons in each hand is so obnoxious. So you're not likely to run into many actual competitors predictable enough to make this a risk worth taking. Sometimes it would be great just like, you know, have a friend over to help me record for a little bit, but usually these recording sections are done late at night. So it's very rare that I'll actually have someone available to help out. So you just see what you see. Yeah, again, I needed to air dodge just sort of diagonally downwards at a specific angle there on top of everything else. Ugh. I need to see if I can maybe come up with a better system for this. But again, what you're seeing there is still quicker than scouring YouTube looking for these. Even then, many of these situations could just fatality. I tried not to lean on fatality too much for Captain Falcon, because if you type, you know, Captain Falcon Ultimate into YouTube, obviously, basically, all of the results are going to be from fatality. You got to dig a decent amount in to find other people. But I didn't want to just be, you know, the fatality show, even though he's clearly the prominent Falcon, which is why you're seeing a fair amount of them here. Luigi. Oh, I'm still... I'm still mixed on how I feel about that character's picture. It's his official picture, so I'm gonna use it, but... Mm. Oh, these Smash Cinematics, I haven't talked about these yet. So normally, when you pause the game, it forces the axis indicator into frame all the time. There's no way to turn it off, which is incredibly annoying. But thanks to a channel called Frenzy Light, who made a tutorial on it, I actually did recently learn how to do this. So what you need to do is use motion controls, which means the Joy-Cons or the Switch Pro Controller. And it's incredibly convoluted. What you do is you pause, then you look down with the joystick, then you activate motion controls, then you look up with the motion controls, and then you can kind of move around with the indicator buried in the floor. Really bizarre that you need to do this. I have no idea why it's programmed this way, but it does at least allow you to use the cinematics. And I think it's a clear step up in polish. 
even though it is very annoying and you can see little bits of wobble here and there because again you're basically just trying to hold the controller really really still while you're moving the joystick around <laughs> yeah, this I discovered by accident. This was sort of a last minute addition to the script just when I was messing around with Luigi in training mode getting footage for the video. There's other characters that that will happen with too. Again, another custom item set up. That one wasn't nearly as elaborate. That was probably about 20 minutes of work. <laughs> I like that cinematic a lot. This took so many attempts. Oh my god. So I got to fortunately reuse some of them for the next segment that you're looking at here, but there are probably 15, 20, 30 more that didn't even make it in. Oh my god, that was so rough to line up with a controller in each hand. It's just rough to line that up in general. There's a reason Luigi's downtown is in this video. It's not a good move. That's just a hilarious clip. I'm glad I managed to find it. I was worried I wasn't going to find a whole lot for me uh, Luigi's Melee downtown. It looked like that for a while. Yeah, this was initially kind of difficult to find footage of the tether edge guarding from Luigi. Nowadays, all Elegant is doing that basically every time he goes for an edge guard. Seems like he's sort of optimizing it to be a really good option. Yeah, the cinematics again. And again, you can notice like a tiny little bit of wobble if you're looking carefully. Yeah, combining cinematics together like this is also just a really good way to fill out time while still giving some dynamics and some movement to the video because generally when I write a script I have at least a rough idea of what I want to be over top of my voice but that's not always the case and in cases where it's not like that it can be really tricky to figure out sometimes so this is a really powerful tool in my arsenal that I've picked up. Also just looks really good so win-win I think I'm probably going to be using it a lot in the future. Yeah, this was a later discovery for me. So initially in the script, I said that Kirby couldn't do this. I was actually surprised to find out that you can just barely get this audio reaction going on. As I say in the video, I don't know how practical it actually is, but the fact that it's possible at all makes me think that maybe Kirby should be experimenting with it a little bit. Because there's no genuinely, truly safe option against Kirby's hammer. He can technically always call you out. Again, quite difficult to get the B reversals going on when Kirby's got to be controlled with the other hand. That one's actually just against the CPU, though. I rarely get to do that, but it's a blessing when I do. I like that transition a lot. So that one's relatively straightforward. If you don't know how to do the sort of green screen effects for Smash Ultimate characters, there are a few stages you can choose that have solid backgrounds. Uh, you can choose Duck Hunt, you can choose Hanimbo, and you can choose 75 meter, depending on what you need. And then you just take the backgrounds out with a standard chroma key. Yeah, this was actually something I found out in the research of this video because I wanted to include the hammers. Really useful move. Like, honest to God, I truly believe that if this wasn't in the hands of DDD, it was on the hands of some character who didn't really have other good ledge options, it would be a staple of his kid, and you'd be considered crazy for not using it. One of the more surprising discoveries I made over this, because I find out new info all the time when I'm making these videos. This one took several re-records to fit all the new info I found just after the initial script had been recorded, because I kept discovering cool new things. Uh, speaking of the cinematic, so the reason the camera cuts back to center there after Ridley connects the skewer is because the game forces it on you, no matter how you try and plan it out in the video editor mode, or the replay mode, or the convert to video mode, no matter what you pick, it's always going to force it back to that same center position. So what you do is after it forces back to center, you detether the camera again. But unfortunate because I'd really like to get nice cinematic angled shots throughout these moves that have the uh, blue trigger. But it's just not possible as far as I'm aware. Definitely a limitation of these Smash cinematics. Yeah, don't you love it when you can just make a mistake and it makes it into the video anyways? It saves you a lot of time. Uh, this is by far the most cumbersome part of the video to record, so... Here's the deal, right? There is no realistic way to tech chase like this with Ridley using one hand and teching with the other character with the other hand, so you gotta use CPUs for it. And you gotta use level 9 CPUs to consistently get the tech, 
and that means that they're not going to really just let you stand in place and shield grab them over and over. They're actually programmed pretty smart in this game, so the process I used is I turned the computer off, shield broke him, pushed him over to where I needed him to be, switched him to level 9 CPU, grabbed him, threw him onto the platform, and prayed that he went in the right direction and that I didn't mess up the tech chase, which happened quite a bit. One of the more irritating, disheartening, repetitive sequences I've ever tried to get in a video, and I think the end result does illustrate the point really well. I'm happy with how it turned out, but God, please never make me do that again. I think out of all the moves I covered on here, I might put Skewer as the most useful. It's probably a tie between that and the Hammers. No, I shouldn't even say tie. I honestly would give it to Skewer. Uh, nothing, no, nothing even close with Ganondorf, though. These moves are genuinely awful. So I had people in the comments pointing out other fringe scenarios you can use Warlock Punch in particular for because that move does have armor on it. You can find a clip, for example, of a Ganondorf using it to catch Cloud trying to use Limit Cross Slash to come back to stage. And of course, if you dig deep enough, you can come up with all sorts of little fringe scenarios like that. But the bottom line is use a different move instead to cover the same option. It's far safer, more or less every time. So if you see some comments talking about how, oh, well, you didn't cover this use for it. A lot of the time, I don't bother responding to all of them, but I know is the answer, right? Like, I'm aware you can technically do that with it, but I don't consider it sort of uh, core enough to its use to be considered it worth including in the video. This one actually was surprisingly easy to land. I was expecting to be in the lab for a while trying to land a up tilt two frame, but it only took about three or four tries. Pure luck. If I'd tried again, it might have taken me 20 more until I got another one, but just happy I got what I got. Which is what you should be using instead. I really love that clip. I've seen it several times over the years, and I'm happy to sort of get a chance to expose it a little bit more. Yeah, so this is my clip again. I just kind of had to use more of my own footage with Ganondorf because obviously finding really good successful applications of this in tournament is really difficult. So yes, forgive me, some of these are a little bit cheesy and a little bit out there and clearly against opponents who are much worse than me. But the bottom line is do that or drive myself crazy because no spot touch, please spot touch, <laughs> right? There's not a whole lot of tournament footage you can find of stuff like that, but it gets the point across better than anything else I can do. Oh, I had to go back and record a little bit of melee footage for this. This is my quote-unquote gameplay you're watching right now, and my god, how did we ever get by without three-frame jump squats for heavyweights? Ganondorf just feels miserable to move around with in melee. I'd forgotten. Yeah, trying to find Ganondorf brawl footage is uh, pretty questionable. There's basically, you can find Salem or you can find Bloody Knight, and that's it. Again, more of the Blossom effects, but this time around, much more elaborate, because when you're doing picture-in-picture, picture, it adds up quickly to the processing power. Not the hero. Yep, still no word on the hero. I'm... I'm getting a little impatient right now, because he really looks like my type of character. I love that sort of combination of swordsman and projectile. The, out of the three characters I'm playing seriously right now, two of them, Dark, Pit, and Link, completely fit that description. The third being Ganondorf, who doesn't have the projectiles, and as I talk about in this video, I wish he did. But he certainly has the sword. I like that shot a lot. I was really happy with that one. Yeah, these two. I messed around with a lot of ideas for how to fill this space up. It took me quite a while to come up with the uh, legacy character cinematics, and I'm really happy with it. These cinematics just open up so much more room for me to decide what to talk about and how to show what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is my favorite ultimate clip I've found in quite some time. Biggie Cheese just... I don't know if he'll ever be able to pull that off again, but my god, man, good job the one time you did make it work. Uh, Hyrule Warriors is such a pain point for me. He's done so cool in that game. This is probably my favorite use of the Luma Mask throughout the video. Uh, this is 
I actually saved the specific effect the entire template for use later on. It was just so perfect with the way that the two links are both facing off into the distance like that, which I assume is a deliberate homage in the original promo art. This is about the only clip I could ever find of Luigi pulling off a down taunt in Ultimate. With the ledge snap, it really just did basically disappear. It's a custom done asset. I, I can't offer it because obviously I don't own any rights to The Legend of Zelda. But basically, if you just search for Legend of Zelda box art, you'll find a certain one. Uh, create a gold background, put a metallic filter over top of it, a metallic overlay, and you get a similar effect. I'm still so pleased with how these Piranha Plant green screen effects worked. Not this one. This, honestly, I just... I pulled an all-nighter to get this video out on the day that I did, and I just simply did not have time to make another Patreon graphic. Oh, that setup you just saw there with Link, too. I have not seen that anywhere else. I'm not necessarily saying I invented it, but I certainly came up with it by myself. All right, and that is it. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. So your feedback is extremely important at this stage. This is obviously the first video in the series, so what you guys say about this will heavily influence the format going forward. So if there's anything you liked, anything that you didn't like, anything that you thought I could maybe expand on more, tighten up more, it's all good. Let me know your honest, unfiltered thoughts. It makes a huge difference at this stage. Have a good one.